Hello. To finish our discussion on quasi-linear utility functions, let's take a look at a special case. Here we have the utility function x1 to the 1 half plus x2. Again, this is quasi-linear because one of the terms is nonlinear and the other one is linear. Additionally, we're given our two prices, $1 per light bulb and $20 per hammer, as well as our income of $40. Let's start, as always, by finding our marginal rate of substitution. Again, that will be marginal utility of good one over marginal utility of good two. In this case, our marginal utility with respect to good one would be one half x1 to the negative one half. Our marginal utility for x2 will just be 1. To simplify this, we'll say 1 over 2 times x1 to the 1 half is our marginal rate of substitution. From there, since this is a quasi-linear function, let's again do our MRS test. Our MRS test will be to determine what happens as x1 increases to our MRS and what happens as x2 decreases to our MRS. As x1 increases, our marginal rate of substitution decreases. x1 gets larger, meaning we're dividing by a larger number, and therefore the entire marginal rate of substitution or this entire function is becoming smaller. Additionally, as x2 decreases, nothing happens to our marginal rate of substitution because there's no variable 2 in this equation. I'll denote that as a horizontal arrow. This means in net, we have a diminishing marginal rate of substitution. From there, if we have diminishing marginal rate of substitution, our next step is to solve like a Cobb-Douglas utility function. We do that by taking our MRS and setting it equal to our price ratio. From there, that will be 1 over 2x1 to the 1 half equals 1 over 20. If 1 over 2x to the 1 half equals 1 over 20, then 2x to the 1 half equals 20. This means x to the 1 half equals 10. Square both sides. x1 optimally is 100. So far, this should look no different than the last problem we've, we were solving, where we took our MRS test, and we found a diminishing marginal rate of substitution. However, when we try to solve for x2, something strange is going to happen. Let's take a look. Again, to solve for x2, we use our budget constraint, p1 x1 plus p2 x2 equals our income m plugging in using the variables we have available to us. Our price of good one is $1. So one X one, our price of good two is $20. So 20 X two and our income is $40. So 40 here, we already found that X one is equal to 100. So we can plug that in here. 100 plus 20 X two equals 40. 20x2 equals negative 60. So x2 optimally equals negative 3. Notice how we're demanding a negative quantity of one of our goods. This is due to the fact that 100 units of x1 will set us over the income that we have available to us. The best we can do then is to zero out good two and purchase all of good one. What this looks like is x1 plus 20 times zero equals 40. 
So optimally, we purchase 40 units of good one and zero units of good two.